I received a letter from a desperate young songwriter asking for advice. I did what any good writer does. I wrote it back. Dear friend, you ask me why the hell am I here? We all got here the same way, I suppose. We followed the song. You're the only one I run to. I run to you. We have a gift, and with that comes an immense responsibility. Mine is really a story of failure. I wanted to give up, but I can't give up on something that I love, and you can't either, because I'll follow your song. Tom, Michael, good morning. Jeff in Las Vegas. Good morning, good morning. Jeff. How are you? I'm doing great, man. I enjoyed this film immensely, so congratulations. Thank you so much. We we. We enjoyed doing it and so happy that you enjoyed it. Well, Tom, over the course of a single night, you narrated a letter of hope to a desperate world. This all began when you received a letter from a struggling songwriter? Exactly. I received a letter from a struggling songwriter, and then I was at the same time going to be inducted, thankfully, into the Nashville Songwriters Hall of Fame. And I gave a 12-minute induction speech using the letter as the device for my speech. And then over the years, I got so much feedback on the, the, the speech that I decided to uh, make it into a one-man performance, which was about an hour. And I did that with my son. We wrote it and performed it 100 times over Nashville. Uh, amazingly for us, the brilliant Michael Lennox, uh, was, who's from Ireland, was in town and saw my one-man performance and said, what'd you say, Michael? Let's make this into a movie. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. well, Michael, did Tom's songs dictate where the camera would take us? I mean, Nashville became a character in the film. Yeah, absolutely. I think what's wonderful about great films is the location is another character. And Nashville has resonated so much, firstly, with songwriting, but Tom's sort of personal experiences. And I think it really helped as a way of illustrating um, parts of Tom's story and, and his struggle to take us around these interesting places, as well as I'm from Belfast and I find Nashville fascinating. So there's a sort of selfish part of it as well. It's an extremely visual city and combined with Tom's stuff was, was brilliant. And Tom, you say, write what you know about and you write about home. And I feel by the end of the documentary, I knew your family. Well, you, that really is the point, honestly, because my family, uh, I think, is your family, and your family is the larger family. It, it's just, as I say in the film, I'm telling you my story because I want you to remember your story. It's almost like we live in a culture of amnesia, and we forget, I forget everything from one day to the next, and the power of story helps me remember who I am, where I'm from, and to whom I belong. Yeah, Michael, because Love, Tom, it almost feels like a master class in storytelling. Yeah, well, it's, it's and there's something really, there's something fascinating about Tom's experiences with the creative process, but also about his own vulnerabilities as a sort of, as an artist and a songwriter. And I think that that's what really interests me. And that's what I feel is, is universal to all our struggles to all art forms and to me as a filmmaker. So I think that aspect of it just really got under the, the skin of what it's like to be an artist and it had a huge impact on me and I was compelled to make a film about it. And Tom, you know, throughout the, the documentary, I was, I was wondering to myself, can creativity be taught? I, I think it can be taught. I think it, you know, they say it's it's more caught than taught, but uh, I, I think, you know, there are certainly, you got to learn the rules before you can learn to break the rules. I mean, there is certainly a, a craft of songwriting. I taught lyric writing at Belmont University for five years. Uh, and I mean, you really can learn the craft of, of lyric writing and, um, you know, and creating rhythms and 
you know, music that, that, that is, it's going to, you know, attract a larger audience. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I think it's both. It's both and caught and taught. And Michael, you recently had the premiere. How was that evening? Well, unfortunately, I wasn't able to make it. I'm in, I'm in London. <laughs> no, no, I'm in London working on another show, but I was in the pub having a pint, toasting Guinness to, to the premiere and, and to, Tom's honor. It was amazing, Jeff. It was, we had um, an amazing crowd at a great theater and to see something that you've seen on a computer on a big screen was fantastic. Tim McGraw was gracious and came and curated the Q&A. So it was, it was a, it was a, it was a red carpet night for us. And to see it with an audience for the first time I met was exhilarating. Yes. <laughs> it was incredible. And finally today, there's also a companion album that come along with the documentary, Tom? Yeah, on Monument Records, uh, they're going to release the companion soundtrack. And so it's all my most popular songs. It's my versions, my demos of the songs, actually. But I've got these amazing uh, artists that have agreed to, to feature with me. Miranda Lambert, Tim McGraw, Colin Ray, Lady A, Chris Jansen. They all join me on this companion soundtrack. I can't wait for you to hear it. Well, gentlemen, congratulations on a great documentary. I, I just felt a slice of Americana watching this. It was just so moving and it was so well done. And I wish you the best of luck with it. Streaming on Paramount Plus, it's Love, Tom. And both of you, come and visit us in Las Vegas. We'd love to have you. We'll do well, it. Thank you. Thank you.